Welcome to International Securities Exchange's podcast series. Facilitated by renowned educators, ISE podcasts are intended to teach beginning as well as seasoned investors the ins and outs of trading. To find an updated list of podcasts, please visit www.ise.com slash podcasts. So kind of this is, you know, this is sort of the, the chessboard that option trading is. You know, you need to see the big picture. You need to look at all of the influences that go into the options price. And volatility, I was just talking with a student about this today. You know, we're talking about if you're in any, any business, right, <clears throat> whatever business you're in, you know, basically as a, as a merchant of any physical product anyway, you buy things and then you, and then you go and maybe you add value to them, maybe you're just a middleman but you go and sell them to someone else. <clears throat> you buy them low and you sell them high. Well, time to time, you can get a discount, right? What if you could buy your widgets 10% lower every single time you bought the widgets? Wouldn't you want to do that? Well, understanding volatility and being able to understand when the options are actually cheap and when the options are actually expensive that's the ticket to gaining edge in the option trading world. <clears throat> now, still, you might make or lose money on, on, a, on being right on your direction or not. But if you're buying the options cheap, you're going to make more when it's a winner. And if you're buying the options cheap and the trade turns out to be a loser, you're going to lose less because you're paying less, because you kind of bought them at a discount already. So these three analyses we kind of tie together, direction, your degree of bullishness or bearishness, you know, hey, do I think this is going to the moon or do I think it's going to, you know, just slowly eke up a couple percent. We take our time horizon into account and our forecast of volatility. Are these options cheap or expensive? And then, and only then, can we select our strategy. This dictates... You know, if, when we look at an option chain, that dictates to us what's available. We may come up with a forecast. We may be bullish, you know, moderately bullish over the next month. We might think the volatility is low. You know, we might want to, uh, you know, do a bull call spread. We might want to buy a bull call spread. Well, sometimes you look at the option chain and the way the prices line up makes it impossible for you to do the spread that you want. You're a little bit at the mercy of, you know, what the options are out there. Now, right now in the, in the option trading world, it's as liquid as it's ever been. Volume, and, volume keeps getting bigger, and market widths on the bid and the ask keep getting smaller. I mean, it's a great time to be a trader, but still, you know, you only have available to you what the option chain is, is showing you. So sometimes, if you want to do a bull call spread, you can't do it. So you need to be versatile. Maybe instead you need to do a bull put spread, or maybe instead you need to just buy a call, and maybe, you know, that option you want to sell is just too cheap and it's not worth it. So versatility is kind of yet one more a attribute that I would say all option traders need for longevity. You know, you want to survive in this market, you can't just know how to buy calls. You can't just know how to trade covered calls. You got to be versatile because, you know, you got to work your way around the option chain and, and trade what the market's doing. Now, the next thing is uh, planning ex exits. <clears throat> now, notice we haven't quite made the trade yet. We've been kind of going through this trading plan for uh, the last 45 minutes, and, and we haven't made the trade yet. Well, and now we're talking about exiting the trade. Well, hold on a second. This Passarelli guy forgot a step. Well, no, no, I didn't. You plan your exits before you even enter the trade. That's all kind of part of the plan. That's all kind of part of the trading process. Well, I'm going to buy this now because I'm hoping later to sell it at this price. 
but I might be wrong. And if I'm wrong, I don't want to lose 100%, so I'm going to sell it out maybe on a stop at this price. Or maybe I'm just going to select a strategy that has multiple legs, and I, I won't use a stop, but instead I'll set it up so that if I lose, I lose a very, very small amount, but if I win, I win big. Planning your exits is the step that happens before you actually make the trade. And you have two exits, plural. One for taking your profit and one for taking your loss. And these can be, you know, these can be very, very simple. I mean, if I'm buying a call, if I make 50%, I'm going to get out. If I lose 25%, I'm going to cut my losses. Or they could be very complex. Uh, you know, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to put on this uh, position where I'm going to buy a call, and if the market goes my way over the next couple of days and uh, my call gets worth 50 cents more, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to roll it into a bull call spread, so I'm going to be able to leg on to, into that bull call spread for edge. You know, I mean, you can make these very, very complex, but the important thing is that you have a plan and you know where you're getting out. Next step, of course, is execute the trade. That's the easy step. Once you're into the position, you want to monitor it, right? I've talked to uh, a number of people. As a matter of fact, I was talking to a guy that uh, I run into on a fairly regular basis in the options industry. And he was telling me about a friend of his who developed this trading system. And you know, I'm listening to him tell me about the trading system, and he's talking about you know, okay, so a trade you have on, you know, there's this algorithm that tells you, you know, when you should get out of this. And, you know, it's all about sort of managing the trade after the fact. And I said, well, you know, usually when I talk to people about trading systems, it's, you know, when this line crosses over this line or something, that's when I get into the trade. I go, you know, where's that step? How, how does this guy actually get into the trade? He said, oh, I don't know, you know it's random, you know, dartboard. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. Doesn't matter how you get into the trade, and although you know that's uh, a fairly unconventional approach, I appreciate the fact that there is something to that. Two people can make the exact same trade at the exact same price at the exact same time, and one of them can make money and one of them can lose money. Because monitoring the trade and adjusting and getting out at the right time—that's what determines if you have a winner or a loser. Starting off with edge helps. But being able to monitor and manage efficiently, that helps too. And that makes a big difference. So, you know, part of this uh, monitoring process is, you know, kind of on a, a macro scale. And some of it is kind of on a very, very detailed, granular type scale. You know, just simply keeping tabs on the currency market and simply keeping tabs on your positions. Hey, I've got a, two exit points for this position. Has it hit one of them? No? OK. Status quo. Keep going. Now again, I said the trading's personal, and it's kind of different for everybody. There are probably some of you in this room who, you know, once an hour, you're looking at your, your screen. Maybe it's once every 10 minutes. You're looking at all your positions. Okay, is everything up to up to speed here? How's it going? And then there's some people who are a little bit more passive. And they'll put on a trade, and you know you'll kind of keep tabs on what the market's doing by, you know, visiting your favorite websites or reading uh, what uh, some people used to call newspapers uh, a long time ago. Um, those have information about the currency market in it as well sometimes. Um, for, you know, you might do do some of that kind of stuff, um, but maybe not actually log into your account, but once a week. You know, you might be a little bit more passive. Which one's right for you? Well, you know, that comes down to your personality, your trading style, and also what types of strategies you're trading. Some strategies require you to be very, very active, and some of them, yeah, you know, not so much. They're 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 a little bit more passively manageable. Thank you for listening to our podcast. To find more podcasts on options, stocks, alternative markets, and market data, please visit www.isc.com slash podcasts.